In this next presentation on confidence interval estimation for the population mean mu, we're going to assume a case where, consider a case where sigma, the population standard deviation, is unknown. And as would be obvious, in the absence of the population standard deviation, we're going to have to use the sample standard deviation S. Now, once we introduce S into this statistic, it follows the T distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And as you can see here, the T distribution looks pretty much like the normal distribution. It does have uh, thicker tails, though, when you observe closely its mathematical uh, properties. Uh, in any event, to calculate the confidence interval estimation for the population mean mu, the model, the definition is the same, except that here we're going to use T instead of Z, and we're going to use the sample standard deviation S calculated from the sample instead of, of course, uh, sigma. And as in the previous case, the product of the test statistic T and this standard error that you see here is going to give us the margin of error. So these two items right here um, is the margin of error. When subtracted from the sample mean estimate, that gives us the lower limit of the confidence interval. And when added to the sample mean estimate, that gives us the upper limit of the confidence interval. So here's a quick example. Uh, here, we're looking at the uh, uh, the performance of a portfolio taking a, a sample, a random sample of uh, a 15-year period, 15-year annual returns, we find the uh, average annual rate of return to be 10.37 percent with a sample standard deviation of 3.5 percent. So we wish to calculate the confidence interval, 95 uh, percent confidence interval for the population mean return on this portfolio. All right, so again here's the 95 percent confidence interval um, for the mean definition. And to implement this, we're going to have to obtain the t-statistic. To find the t-statistic, we're going to have to determine the degrees of freedom because the t, as I showed earlier, is, is uh, distributed uh, with uh, the number of degrees of freedom based on the sample size. Here, sample is 15, minus 1 is 14. So with 14 degrees of freedom, we find the t-statistic to be 2.145. And here is the t-table. Now, typically, uh, most t-tables are going to give you critical values based on one tail. However, in confidence interval estimation, as you see here, we're looking for critical values corresponding to two tails. At uh, alpha of 0 0.05, one half of the tail is 0 0.025, and the other is 0 0.025, as I show here. Therefore, on this table, we're going to have to look for critical values under 0 0.025. And I give you a little help right up here. For good measure, if you look at the bottom of this table, it does show, in fact, that the critical values for 95% confidence level are to be obtained from this column. So now, 14 degrees of freedom, we're going to have to work it up all the way to the right to this point and catch it to be 2.145. And that's how we obtain this number right here which, when multiplied by this standard error, gives us a margin of error of 1.938. And so, the lower and upper limits of the confidence interval respectively are 8.43% and 12.31%. And so, we conclude that we are 95% confident that the average annual rate of return on this portfolio ranges between 8.43% and 12.31%. Now, there's a website, there are a bunch of websites out there that provide uh, calculators for critical values. This is one of them. Now, these are freeware on the, on the World Wide Web. I, they are third-party um, uh, websites, and so I use them because they are free, and uh, I don't have any connection with them. So anyhow, to use this website right here, all right, you just simply need to type in the degrees of freedom, which is 14, and the two-tail probability value would be 0.05, and uh, then you calculate, and you see the critical value right here, all right, 2.1448, and um, that's uh, what we used here in the um, in calculating the confidence interval. So, we can also use Excel, all right, right up here. 
and this is the format and let me show it to you right away so this is the input data and we wish to calculate the 95 percent confidence level now for this all right um, we're gonna the function is confidence all right equal confidence you can type lowercase or uppercase now it's gonna be confidence t because if you use this t it gives you the confidence interval for the population mean using student t distribution which is what we want the first one here is for the case we already looked at which is confidence interval for the population mean using normal distribution z now if you're using older version of Excel then you're just gonna have to use confidence right here but this confidence is gonna calculate uh, confidence levels for the normal distribution Z anyhow this is what we want and you can either type it out or double click if you double click it gives um, it gives it to you already right there so now we uh, cheat sheet here for you alpha is you click on this comma um, standard uh, deviation you click on this which is the only difference between this calculation and that for the normal distribution normal distribution would have had Sigma right here okay comma and finally sample size which is this all right and then you close parenthesis now this is the margin of error that's what Excel gives you to calculate the lower and upper limits you hit equal and it's gonna be the sample mean as I show you right here the sample mean you click on it minus the margin of error and that gives you the lower limit and to find the upper limit equal the sample mean and to that you add the margin of error and that's it the lower and upper limits of the 95 percent confidence interval for this problem now in this second case again we revisit the confidence interval estimation for the population mean mu when sigma is unknown however here we assume large sample sizes now a little note here it says whenever sigma is unknown the correct distribution to use is t now though but it says here that if the sample size is sufficiently large the t distribution is going to begin to look like the z distribution and so in such cases we can approximate using the z you might say why worry with the z if we can definitely use t which actually t is what's correct answer the critical values for z are easy to know to know for example for 95 percent confidence level we know the critical value is going to be 1.96 for t you're going to have to uh, um, go into your tables and stuff like that to look to look up the uh, actual value so I discussed this because many textbooks would provide this approximation right here so anyhow um, here's an example and here you're trying to calculate the confident 95 percent confidence interval for the average account balance in a local bank here you take a random sample of a hundred accounts and you find the average accounts balance to be three hundred and fifty seven dollars and sixty cents <laughs> well the account holders uh, don't seem to have much money in this bank <laughs> I guess but anyhow uh, the standard deviation here is 140 and uh, the confidence level that we want to calculate is 95 percent all right so going uh, going here if we have to do the correct thing to use the t distribution the uh, degrees of freedom would be 99 which is 100 minus 1 and that gives us a critical value of t of 1.984 now here it is in the table if you go here to the table back over here now you could say the, this is a column for degrees of freedom you could say wow I don't see 99 no worries just use what's closest that's good enough if you're gonna have to use table alright and that's how on for the 95 percent confidence we have this 1.984 it wouldn't be much different if in fact you had seen one point if in fact you have seen the value for 99 percent degrees of freedom so going forward that's how you get this guy right here but if you really want to get be absolutely sure go ahead and use Excel and it's gonna give you the lower limit and the upper limit and that's where they are right here so anyhow so we can say we're 99 percent confident that the average account balance in this bank is from three hundred and twenty nine dollars and eighty two cents and three hundred and eighty five dollars and thirty eight cents the point estimate here that we obtained was three hundred fifty seven dollars and sixty cents as you see right here so now 
if we have to use the approximation, we're just going to have to throw in 1.96 right here. And with that, we find the limits to be as shown here. Lower limit, $330.16. Upper limit, $385.04. Now, observe that the difference between the limits we calculate using the Z approximation and those we calculated going back here using the T statistic um, is only, as I show here, 34 cents. In fact, if I were to go back here to the T table, you find that as the deg degrees of freedom increase beyond 30, you see that the critical values as over here corresponding to these larger degrees of freedoms are pretty close to 1.96 look over here this is telling you that for infinite degrees of freedom the critical value that you're gonna see here is gonna be the Z statistic of 1.96 so these numbers incre increasingly approach 1.96 as you increase degrees of freedom the differences are not so huge as to throw off your estimates by a whole lot as a result, many analysts, when working with quick data, would uh, quickly use um, disease statistic to find their results. But in this day, with the ubiquitous, uh, in these days, with the ubiquitous nature of uh, the internet and uh, Excel, of course, um, you can uh, more accurately use the t-statistic in calculating confidence interval uh, estimations.